Bruno Bastos, welcome, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'm sure that you're gonna have like a nice, nice uh, interview right now. <laughs> yeah, finally, like we. I was like, I started. I just started a new job. This um, I got a job. Well, I went to a job interview. Actually, I called for a job Monday without knowing what it was. Then mm -hmm. the, the 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 owner was like. You haven't read the description? I was like, no. <laughs> and he liked that. So like he called me up for an interview, like, come by Tuesday and have a chat. And then he said, like, I really liked this, like, even though he called me a, a wild card. It was like, hmm, this could work. And he he admitted like he really enjoyed it. I had guts to like just call out of nowhere and ask, so how mm -hmm. is what's what's this job? And then I got it and started the uh, Wednesday so yeah, but when you when you need when you need something uh and you you're willing to to take the risk right because <laughs> opportunity not knock twice no my, my, that's my like first, my first international travel uh to to teach seminar and then work with coaching somebody I was from Australia in 2003, and then I remember that Andrea Pedernegas asked me, Bruno, do you speak English? And I was like, yes, of course. <laughs> and I know how to say yes, no, and how much. That's it. That, that's what I knew. But yeah. like when he <laughs> asked me if I, if, I, if I speak English, For me, like it just clicked, like oh, there's opportunity, and then <laughs> I I reply right away, yes, of course I do. <laughs> so three weeks later, I was in Australia, and then was there for 45 days. Oh my god! Yeah. Uh, oh, that's it's like yeah, opportunity knocks and draw, and the opportunities is like they're they're not always knocking like that. That's mm -hmm. so it's like what uh because like Monday, yeah, Monday was like an how to say that a day I was like everything is chaotic, I mm -hmm. don't have a job, like and then I was like, okay, this job. Well, I read a bit about it, this job, and I was like, mm, yeah. And then I, I could just call like uh like just went was being myself. And then mm -hmm. I got the job, like, so it's like, then I, then I realized, okay, mindset and like deciding and being decisive about something that's so important and mm -hmm. taking the right choices. And then it's now like, yeah, yes. so a new chapter. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, then like, let's go back when I went to, When I met you, that was in Bulgaria, summer mm -hmm. of 2019. Uh, mm -hmm. I had just trained jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu for less than a week, maybe. Then I went yeah. on holiday and I, I was like eager to train when I went to, because like me and holidays, I don't, I can't stand this, like going to the beach, laying in the sun. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Not and, then I, and, <laughs> and then I went there to your club in Varna. Mm -hmm. um with batman and uh so um so what was the name the owner yeah, and Stanislav, yeah. Stasho as well yeah alexander Sasha. yeah and then there and then i asked some of my uh, of the guys uh well my my teacher uh do you know bruno bastos yeah he was when he was fighting like he was one of the best and i had to like do some research And then, uh, mm -hmm. and then I went there like I didn't know anything. But it, and I remember what you said, what you told me, like um, even though like if I didn't know anything, like just to be there and and to see what it is and like yeah, just being there and getting inspired, inspired. That was mm -hmm. like yeah. Yeah, because you told me, I remember that you told me that you had been trained for like a little over a week. Yeah. And then I and then I said, like, I'm going to be very honest, like for white belts on that situation, 
is very hard to learn because the guys were asking for advanced techniques, yeah. right? But and and then I said, well, like you're gonna have that experience, like that first touch yeah. with like high level jujitsu, and then like you just enjoy the moment, you embrace the moment, yeah. because if we stick with jujitsu later on, you're gonna like appreciate that opportunity that you had. Yeah, right. I do. That's still like, and just being there, I, w- I felt so honored that I could go and train and train with um, such a humble professor like you, and and Thank like you. well, and like all this. Like uh, I remember, I went over like was professor, and I was the one guy who wrote you, and then like I didn't know what I went on to because like and suddenly all of this like big club. No, well, I remember one of the guys that. W- that there was my well who i was set up with and i told mm-hmm. him i had been trained for less than a week and you could see his body language is like oh no <laughs> but, <laughs> but they were like helpful because like even though i know maybe it felt it like this maybe but of course and but still i didn't feel like i was a burden at all because that's what i've mm-hmm. learned about Brazilian jitsu like the home like there's no ego everybody's helping each other the higher ranks higher belts are helping the lower and then like and then it goes in a circle um the circle mm-hmm. of helping each other yeah yes it's exactly. like yeah so and i didn't well and that but then i figured found out that uh, you know uh, professor jose um jose carlos mm-hmm. yeah yeah, man, Zé, Zé Carlos, he is like a great jiu-jitsu practitioner, uh, really good, really good coach, has mm-hmm. produced like many champions, right? Yeah. And yeah. He, he is a, a world-class competitor himself as well mm-hmm. on the martial division. So it's good to, to Norway to, to have a guy uh, like him there, yeah. like spreading the, the, the seeds yeah. of jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I just, uh, um, well, it was Monday I went to, so, like, Monday was a big day for me, like, uh, both, like, I made some, I made the right choices, and then I went to promotion in the club, and I, like, I had never been, like, I was, like, okay, there will be promotion, there will be belts, and then, like, if I got a stripe or not, I didn't, it wasn't matter, but, like, then I got the stripe, and my teacher told me, like, he, he was looking forward to hand it out because he knew how much hard I've been working for it and I've been traveling far mm-hmm. to to train. I've, I've been traveling like one, two hours in total, like one hour to training, one hour home again. I did it for three, four, oh. three days a week for almost a year until the COVID hit and because it, it was building my character as well. So it's like a changing my whole life in... Yeah. In a way, yeah. Well, in a way, yeah. So nice, nice. That's yeah. awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So it's like, and now on, uh, like, even though it's it's one strife, but like, it's the beginning. Like, well, a new a new beginning again for me. Like, because now, I will continue like to work harder and like learn and even with COVID and all this, like I've chosen to like train and. Well, we can spar a role, so it's mm-hmm. more cardio working on that, and it's important as well. Yes. So yeah. yeah, we we went we went through that phase here, so now in Texas is one of the states that's like more like open in United mm. States, yeah. like each state is different, right? So mm. yeah, um, the lockdown was rough, and then when we came back, you only like non contact classes. Right for two weeks mm. or three, whatever, and then like, but now we're on the we were on the point that like it's no more classes, you know. Um, I still I still keep like uh, a certain number of like maximum spots for class, mm. but yeah. the students can feel safer as well, you know. Yeah. Um, but like it, like life life goes on, and yeah. life goes on. Like I I tell I always tell my students like. Competitors, for example, like they go to a tournament Saturday and Sunday, and I tell them like no matter they win or lose, Monday is Monday anyways for everybody. Yeah. Right? You're back to reality. So and then like, because because that's life. Mm. So yeah. 
is a so new true. virus. People are still learning how to deal with. So every every week has something new, right? And then something that the people thought was right is wrong. And then what people thought was wrong now is right. And then like, and then like I'm just making sure that I'm leading uh, my students and my family to don't forget about living because mm-hmm. like the, the fear like of death is what stops life as well. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, we just we just keep living like we take uh, precautions we take care of everything that we can yeah. because all you can do is take care of all things that you have control of yeah precisely and that's so what you're saying there is something i've been working on uh i've been working through a book by a former elite soldier he's one of the i don't know if you know the norwegian ufc fighter uh, jack hermanson Mm-hmm. He's fighting. Uh, he's fighting next week in the UFC. Yeah, we're gonna um, fight Kevin Holland. Yeah. So I've had. Um, so his mental trainer. He's well. I will. I will consider him as my friend. And like he brought a book on having a warrior mindset. And mm-hmm. I had been. I've been working with that book and been working with the stuff that, the tools that he keeps me giving there for, three months maybe. I didn't want to rush through anything. And it has been so helping where it says it's like, uh, okay, what can you control? One of the, one of the lessons and tools is like, what's, what can you control? Like, okay, you can always um, uh, be, be more responsible, but that's not important. It's more uh, important to take control mm-hmm. like, and to have control. Uh, so that's something I've been working on. That's the only thing you can control. You can't control what's going on outside only thing you can control is yourself and so it's so yeah That's important true. important lesson and like for some it's like yeah i've heard it before but like you really have to go into yourself okay look okay what do what's what is going on around me like what can i control put it down on paper so like that's what i've been doing like physically writing it down mm-hmm. and like yeah some mindset it's like to train my, my mindset and like work on my fighter mindset or warrior mindset. That's like what's driving me and like what I want to spread out to the, to the rest of people and me. So like sharing it, like, but not throwing it over them, but more like mm-hmm. it's so important. Yeah. So nice. that's, yeah. So, so all of this, because I went to train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, like training for a year and my, my teacher once he told me again, like give it a year and like, you'll see where you like, and now like, you will just keep moving like like moving more and more steps forward so yeah, you, need, you, need, you need to have goals as well yeah right? yeah yeah of of course you need to set goals yeah that's really important yeah and then like it's not like daily goals weekly goals monthly goals yearly goals you know, and then when and then like the bigger plan like well, where do you see yourself like in three years where mm. do you see yourself in five years <clears throat> you know yeah. so th- those are the things that like that that's how i like operate let's say mm, yeah yeah that's like interesting because i know you have also your team a uh, team lead bjj mm-hmm. so that's and i've like uh i've been following like there's so much to follow but like what i've seen like the lessons you put out it's it's they're so important of like the few mm. that I've seen, like that you've been sharing on social media. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what's the, what's the what's the concept of team lead and the purpose of it? Um, first, like I, I start I start with um, I was part of Novinion for many years, right? And then uh, since the formation of Novinion. Back in 1995, um, before that, like I started back in 1990 uh, with Master Neuri Gomes Jr. And then for I trained with him for a little over a year and a half. And then trained with Ailson Brites, Jukão, uh, for like pretty much one full year. Mm-hmm. And then and then I end up like with Wendell, Master Wendell Alexander. 
uh, end of 1992, beginning of 1993. So that's when I started training for when, when that. So that was before like North New York, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, so I seen like, uh, and then I, I, I watched the formation of North New York and then North New York, North New York is a huge, huge team uh, that uh, is tradition, like has mm-hmm. a lot of tradition in, in, in Jiu Jitsu, you know? And I was able, I was able to see a lot of things that work uh, well in, in a big teams, and a lot of things that I think that don't work. Um, and then knowing other other people uh, from other associations as well, like Vespa, Alliance, like Atos, like all this. Mm. So like I got to one point where I wasn't I wasn't happy with with a lot of things, and then I decided to just go on my own. You know, and so like the first thing that I did was like I didn't want to join any other team, so I, like I just go on my own. And then it was Bruno Bicycle Association. Mm-hmm. Um, big, but uh, like I always want to have a, a a neutral name. All right, so it was Bruno Bicycle Association in the beginning because uh, I didn't uh, I didn't have like a name, and then it was like that took me like about two years uh, to figure out a name with a meaning. <laughs> I want a name with a meaning. Hmm. Right, and then like one thing that one thing that was bothering me as well when it was Bruno by Association is that um, let's say um, a student like Claudio Nascimento they have a, a, a student that really good, and then people say, "Oh, that that Bruno hmm. by student because it was Bruno by Association, hmm. right?" Or Danny Alvarez would have like his daughter Daniela Alvarez, really good. And then a lot of people thought that Danielle was my student just because she was competing under Bruno Bass Association. Mm. You know, so I want to have a, I want to have a neutral name for that as well. You know, so each individual they could have their recognition, right? So and then so when I when I when I finally thought like team like a lead like leave every day to achieve your dreams because has that has been uh, my whole life. Uh, that's what I believe like in life, like you should live every day to achieve your dreams and then like uh, that's why I, th- I told you before like, the importance of goals because like to achieve your dreams you need to have goals, right? Mm, yeah. So like and th- so that was the thing, like live every day to achieve your dreams and then one thing that I want to make sure that I wasn't doing like other associations you know, like you go like Grace Barra or Novian or like the Alliance, like whatever, it's gonna be like, uh, let's say like Grace Barra, uh, Texas, Grace Barra, New York, Grace Barra, yeah. like whatever. <clears throat> and then like on, on Lead BJJ, uh, one, one of the biggest things that I feel for the the professors that, and or coach that are part of, they have their own schools, they can they can like uh, brand their own name. They can like mark their own name. So my school, for example, that's the headquarter of Trinity BJJ, is Bachelor Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Mm. You know, and then you're gonna have like ours Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You're gonna have Warlord MMA. You're gonna have Power City. You're gonna have Rough House. You're gonna have uh, Danny Jiu Jitsu Club. Like you're gonna uh, like. So a lot of different names were like Red River BJJ. So where you can you can always you can always like you're part of something big, yeah, right? Because that that um, that sense of belonging to something big, I think, is very important for the human being. Yeah, right. You belong yeah. to something that like you know like or like have. Not everybody gonna think the same, but people have similar values, similar beliefs, you know, yeah. uh, similar goals. So they thinking on the same uh, direction. Yeah. Uh, so that was the thing. Like I wanna, I wanna be able to people brand their names, all right? Because I think that's important. I think you working for someone. And working for yourself are two different things. Yeah, yeah, it is. Right? Yeah. So if if everybody had to be lead BJJ something, then like, oh, okay, I'm working for the name lead BJJ. 
And then you have like Norway Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. you're working for Norway Jiu Jitsu. <clears throat> yeah. And you want you like branding that name. So you brand your own name, like mark yourself, you know, and you still part of something big that is Lily BJJ. So like that, that was like uh the 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 mantra live every day to achieve your dreams and then i believe inside that mantra with all those guys like some of the names that i already said and it goes like john jean rivers BG, like because we have a lot of affiliates right um they're like all of them they have the possibility of grow their names and then they're then once they grow in their names that automatically grows lead bjj as well so they don't have to be marketing lead bjj because once they are growing lead, lead bjj is growing as well mm, yeah. so like that that for me was like the, the biggest thing that i want to um be different than other teams uh i think that helped me a lot to to have like like-minded guys like joining the team you know, like we we have a really good like environment between like the the all the coaches from the uh, the affiliate schools. You know, like mostly based in Texas, mm. so yeah. you, we're really strong in Texas. But we start like we have affiliates in Mexico as well. You know, we start like having uh, other affiliates like very few for our, right now, but we start having like in the United States, in other parts of the United States, not only Texas. Like we have like uh, New Mexico, we have mm. Michigan, you know, like so start starting to to grow in yeah. Europe. Of course, we have in Bulgaria, yeah. right? Uh, with BJJ Varna, Sofia, and then Total Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Sofia, mm. right? Uh, we, do, we just have like uh, two two or three months ago, uh, join us uh, Ahio uh, team from uh, Finland. Yeah, um, okay yeah interesting yeah they are on a on a city near housing okay um and we're growing it. we have australia we have brazil you know so like that that's the idea like everybody everybody like every name that i have mentioned now i didn't say lead varna lead yeah. sofia lead. so <laughs> they can grow themselves and then feel good, like feel good you knowing that you're working, like to build your name. Mm. And then feels good to work to build your name and knowing that you're part of something big. Mm. And Let's knowing see. that something <laughs> big allows you to grow your own name. Mm. Right. So that's like, that's, I would say that's um, the biggest thing for me. Because mm. like my mindset is uh, on that on that sense, if like a martial art program, like we, we do like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right? Yeah. Uh, for me, I never call Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I just call Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm, not going, I'm not going over branding Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, yeah. Basic, yeah. Or whatever, right? right? Yeah. So, um, but like martial art, like supposed to be to help people, right? Yeah, yeah. it is. It is. Well, why? Why am I help you if you can just build my name? Why? Like, no, that's so how, yeah. <laughs> how am I how am I help you if you just build my name? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Yeah, and then leads yeah. a new show name. You know, so like for me that that it was that stood with me. You know, like uh if I'm if I'm like I if I as a business because martial arts is a business as well. Yeah, and I understand yeah. that. And that's the business that I make my living, right? Mm, but yeah. if, as a business, one of the things that I sell is that I may help you to on your personal growth. Love this. You should, you should be able to grow yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because like that was what I noticed about this when you when you put it out like with lead BJJ. And the way I haven't well, it's been some time to balance. Like I have looked at, it, but I know like that was what was so interesting. The way you were like, it's not just for, like for 
staying healthy and that's that's some of the say the effects you get out of it but more like to like personal growth yes yeah. like, uh, i believe that i'm blessed to have jiu-jitsu as a tool mm. to help people on their personal growth oh. Wonderful. Because like I, I always I always tell like my students and I write that as well that I love Jiu Jitsu. Like, um, like I live Jiu Jitsu, I think I am Jiu Jitsu, hmm. you know, but it is beyond Jiu Jitsu. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like, because like how how you how you, you can, like if you pay attention on the match, how people approach each each round and what they do outside of the match. You can see the personalities, like some are more aggressive, so, some are oh, more yes. yeah. some they want to finish, some they want to hold, and then you want to, when you talk to them outside, oh, yeah, okay, I understand now. Yeah. And then, like, how how you can explore, like, other areas to help that person get stronger in what they're good at over here, and then, and then, like, not be weak or like get better in on their um weak 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 points as well because mm-hmm. like I'm I, I'm a I'm a like on constant like progress as well I'm I'm a work in progress like I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. not like different than anybody same here right? same here <laughs> it's like yeah. as yeah it's like same as like I've been even though I've been working with as I mentioned the book earlier like all the tools there and it, it has to be like a decision I have to, like it's something that I have to want not like it's not an option for me anymore same like mm-hmm. uh, when I've been getting up at f- to train at 6 a.m to roll and I've been doing that for six seven eight weeks yeah and like it's a decision because it's something that I have to like want because I want to grow I just I don't want to stagnate like I want progression instead of stagnation and that's and even though I want that, like still I have to take the choices because there's life as as you said in the beginning, life life happens and like suddenly mm-hmm. you win a competition, but then it's Monday again. Like um so it's like yeah, it's, it's constant, fight, constant fight, constant like, fight. Yeah. Choices. Like you said choices, and then like one thing I was telling um uh, one of my students um uh, past weekend. Uh, he went to tournament. He didn't have the result that he he, he wanted, hmm. you know. And then I pointed at him some of the things that he wasn't having the best choices. Hmm. All right, because uh, I'm very honest with my students, which is a good thing and a bad thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> not everyone is ready to, to to hear the truth sometimes. Of course. And, no and then myself, yeah. myself. <laughs> right, that includes myself. Yeah. Right, uh, but I, I was telling him that w- everybody that's successful, if you if you like, in some point, if you if you like, you're listening, paying attention, they're gonna talk about consistency, right? Yeah, yeah. So you have to be consistent. But what I told my student that that student, and I have to order, order like a couple of students, is that consistency is start with consistency of choices yeah yeah no oh, that's that's the that's very profound and deep like yeah right because yeah like oh no, i made a choice i made a choice to make um my life healthy just like his. but on a saturday night you know, all your friends hanging out watching ufc <sighs> oh yeah you do not have the best choice on how to eat and how to drink. Right? And then, like, you say, like, oh, but it's just, like, one day, yeah, it's just one day. I get it. But, like, what's your choice? Yeah. They said that I have a, I have a student uh, that I'm going to mention the name, Alex Lopez. Like, he just won uh, no gi pants uh, as a purple belt. And he... He was promoted at the podium at Pants, like he won as a blue belt, right? Mm. So last year he won Ogi Pants a blue belt, he won Ogi American Nationals, he was silver Ogi Worlds. But anyways, like he started uh, 
uh, with me, I want to say 2017, maybe. Hmm. Uh, and uh, what, 16, like something like that. So anyways, he, well, maybe 2016. So anyways, he like, right off the bat, like, okay, see like geek, the kid is good compared or everything. He likes that. He likes to put his energy, like he likes the feeling of adrenaline and everything. But like when I was going, and then I decided to move up and then got a blue belt and then like he was winning a lot of stuff in Texas. But the big nice. ones would never play. It. And then like he was like, What what is wrong? And then like I was like, like <laughs> there's nothing wrong. Like the thing is, like, what the choice that you make, right? He's a young he's a young guy, so on the weekends he would go and like to have fun. And uh, for yeah. me, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> the guys that were winning that you're, were like young like him, they're not going out and party like maybe every weekend and every day of the weekend, right? Mm. Maybe they're not hangover on Monday for the competition training. Maybe they're not hangover on Saturday for the competition training. Mm. You know, like yeah. but those are toxins that you put in your body, you know? Yeah. Um, and then like, and then like, when he start make better choices, and then like, boom, boom, he start getting the podium, and they start like win the majors, and now, now he's one of the best competitors in the world in his division. As a, he was as a blue belt, I just promoted him to purple, and then he went and won Ogi Pants. So nice. already arrived, like establishing himself, you know, uh, and yeah. then like. I told him like there's not only jujitsu because he has a degree and now he's doing specialization and then like next semester he's looking to his time to what he's gonna do and also he still he still can keep training and then like my conversation with him wasn't about jujitsu it was about like the decisions that he has to make for they're gonna impact his life mm. right because yeah, jujitsu some point yeah, jujitsu some point. Like we never know, like he can like please don't gonna happen anything, but like he can get injured and then be of out of for six months or one yeah. year. Like you never know, but like so and how, how you make a living, you know, like mm, so yeah. I feel that as as a as a as a sensei, like I, as a mentor, like I have a bigger responsibility as well uh on how what I say impact my students choices hmm. you know yeah um so like I, I, uh, sometimes i joke with them that they they <laughs> join the the, the 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 school right they they join go they go there join basketball and jiu-jitsu when they join they pay to have jiu-jitsu classes but they end up with a, like a life coach or like a, mm. a mental coach yeah. with a transformation coach, nutritionist, <laughs> like those, yeah, those, that's, those everything. And that's like what I love. I love about jujitsu, like my sensei, and then professor. Well, sensei Damon, and then professor Jose. I haven't seen him that much, but like. Uh, but say like to see what I learn and like what I get from it and like even though like trainings are as well like of course there's never an easy training I always learn something then I get learn a bit more about that mm -hmm. detail and then I have to work on my own because like now when I live I don't live close to my to the gym to the club anymore and then you have COVID mm -hmm. we've been we, we've been lucky to well since we had promotion we have been fortunate to to like get um uh be allowed to train because um since he's a doctor as well so and, he, and he's been like getting like he handed in a good uh application for it so like they've been mm. fortunate to train and then and then i go train and like there's one one guy there in the club like he's a 18 19 and he's uh he's very strong and then he's been he's been training consistently um, and like I hate training with him because like I know I get my B as being and he's like a monster like this big like rock but like mm -hmm. still like then I I get this like we were, we were ro uh, rolling here um Monday and I decide okay he looks at me like are you ready I'm like 
I don't want to, but I'm doing it anyway. Like, and I managed to like pull them down, like hold them. And like, I almost got the, like the front choke for the rear naked ball. And then the front, I'm front naked. Mm. Yeah. Front or rear naked, front naked choke. Anyways, like I was so mm-hmm. close. Like I was struggling and you could see like pinning him down and like, but of course we had to yield for the black belt. So like, yeah, but then it was like, to have the success, but, but still be humble and like, yeah, I learned so much when I trained with him and when other with others, I can learn from them and mm-hmm. being submitted by um, kids, well, kids or young adults who are 15, 16 and they're, yeah, and yeah. that's, that's, that's the best. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a big thing just as well, like we talk about consistent of choices and now, and now going to, to the evil, like, because a lot of people, they compare themselves with others. Right yeah. and yeah, too like, often. Like like everything in life, you just everyone, everyone gonna have your own speed, your own speed of learning process, your own speed of maturing the techniques, your own speed of maturing your mindset in jujitsu, mm. right? Um, and I don't I don't like when people say like that's my personal view, right? Like mm. I don't like when people say like oh should have no ego, like, if, like, no, ego is good, ego is healthy, you know, if yeah, you, yeah. like, if you know how to deal with, uh, because if you have no ego, that means, like, you don't care. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like, I don't, I don't want to tap every round, but, like, if I understand that's part of the process, and how do I get better, like, question, you know, what, where I need to improve, yeah. You know, and not like, oh, like, oh, this guy, oh, man, no, like, I don't want to, because you're going to see, like, some people, the exact same way they avoid problems in life, they avoid, like, problems at, at a training. Like, what are the problems? People that can beat them. Yeah. Because they don't know how to deal with problems. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, like, it, it is it is a choice do you deal with your problem or you just like move out like off the way and then like like you're just gonna like uh put a, like a, some makeup on on that on that little that you, you know like yeah at some point the problem gonna catch gonna catch up with you yeah and and now you're gonna need to to deal with and then and then like the problem now is bigger yeah yeah, I remember like I had was it last year? Um uh, I had some issues with a purple belt. Um I haven't been going public with the story anyways. I'm not telling the per uh, pe- person's name anyways. But like and I, I like I just said like I went like being a baby sort of like honestly speaking, yeah. Uh, uh, and then but like so like I decided to not train because like it was like I, I didn't want to deal with it. May then again, maybe I guess my well my ego was it was I was being well it was too big maybe. But then I decided like hey I'm gonna step up I'm gonna be a man and I'm gonna deal with it. And I, I just pulled him aside and said before training I was like hey man I'm sorry for just the way I acted. He was like it caught him off guard. He didn't expect to see that coming and. It was such, it was so important for me to do that to progress, or else if I hadn't done it then, I don't know what would happen. Huh? Personal growth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, because I didn't need to, to like go to my sense, say, hey, I'm having a problem with this purple belt. There will always be that kind of, but if I don't deal with it, either I can decide also like to not deal with it if it isn't a bigger deal. But this was so important for me, like, to deal with it and like i can do it myself like i don't need anybody else to to help mm-hmm. me and like yeah and even though i'm like 33 years old oh yeah 32 that time yeah but like still was so important so it's almost a year ago and like it was so important to do it like yeah that's like mm-hmm. and i think people who don't like people are afraid to like being transparent to show their like to um, open up for their weaknesses like it's mm-hmm. it's important like uh if you can't that's what i've learned also from the book again like 
if you can't deal with your problem, like you have to be honest about your weakness in order to grow as well. Like that's a part of the mindset. Yeah. Ownership. Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So it's like, I've told, I've learned so much from jiu-jitsu like in over a year and yeah. Love it. (laughs) It's you a baby just one year. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Like, yeah. So like, and, and now that I'm far away, like even where I live now, like I have the opportunity to, to at least train cardio and like, it is what it is. Like there's nothing much else to do. Like, like I still, like mm-hmm. I could, yeah. But then I have to, and then when I can't train cardio, like I will have to find other ways of training, but like still mm-hmm. jujitsu, like when I get the chance to do the, even if it's, some technique of rolling hip thrust or anything like but it has to be maintained as well so that's why yeah and when i go to train mm-hmm. with my club where i started like i have to it's like keeping me um how to say like sharp because like i have to stay in shape because they train weekly they train three times a week four times a week mm-hmm. and when i go to train it like i can't come as like if on like not fit at all <laughs> and be weak because i know what's mm. expecting me so it's good for me as well so yeah yeah, so yeah. Always a challenge. it's important to always have that challenge as well to get you out of the comfort zone yeah yeah so there's no process in comfort zone nope like that's why losses are important as well yeah like in every every area of life yeah right like um I, I made a I made a post another day um, and then someone someone made a comment oh never a loss always a lesson and then I replied the comment no no there there are losses and I and then I because I don't believe on that like you either win or lose yeah that 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 doesn't work like you win or lose like it's that simple like in everything in life yeah right. And then because like you either win or learn, so that means that when you win, you don't learn, right? Like yeah. you learn about yourself, like winning and losing. Yeah, you do. Because people need it's not only like how you learn how to deal with losses, how you learn how to deal with with pictures as well. Yeah. Right. And then and then I reply, no, there are losses and losses. Those losses are necessary to like a personal growth. Yeah. You know, like. Um, and then it, it is funny because like we, we teach kids since three years old, right? All the way to adults. Like I think my older student now is 63 years old. Hey, hey. Um, so we talk about 60 years of difference between the younger and the older student. <sighs> and the message is the same. So I don't expect they're like, the little one we call it the, the baby sharks the class like <laughs> three to five i don't oh. expect them like to understand everything that we say i don't expect the i don't expect like the the the, the 10 year old 12 years old 13 years old to understand right but like the things like how you planting the the seed mm, beautiful yeah you know like because like i tell i like the kids like what what they they wanna they they wanna be good at jiu jitsu, uh, they don't wanna lose. When they see the, the competition, because kids like normally love like compete with the mm. friends, right? Yeah. So and I tell them like, doesn't matter gold medal on Mon- on Sunday if you don't know how to defend yourself on Monday, right? Because the competition doesn't prove that you're good at jiu jitsu, proves that you're good at competing. Oh, right? beautiful. <laughs> And then like, it's like, so I think, so, oh, Bruno, so you're going to say that's not good at jiu-jitsu? No, no, I'm good at jiu-jitsu. That, that doesn't mean being arrogant. It's just like a fact, but not the fact because I win tournaments. The tournaments prove that I'm good competing. What for me proves that I'm good at jiu-jitsu is my capacity of like share jiu-jitsu with people and then make people understand jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm make people understand how to think uh, in jiu-jitsu mm. and how they can grow 
in jiu-jitsu, right? And then for the kids, for the kids is like, my biggest goal with them is give them as much experience as possible that what jiu-jitsu can give. So in order to then become a successful adult, all right? Beautiful. Because like, again, like a lot of things that I tell them now, I'm 100% sure that they're gonna like, oh, whatever, Coach Bruno, like, or they're not understanding, like, you know, kids, like, whatever. But that kid that is 11 now, he'll be 27 someday. Yeah. yeah. And if I got my job done correctly, when he's 27, he's gonna be like, man, I remember when Sensei Bruno was saying this. And that, that is the world title. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, yeah. That, that's, that's the world title. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know? yeah, like... So, like, I have, like, one, one of the things that my wife and I, we are very proud of is that the biggest number of um, memberships that we have are family memberships. Mm. Yeah. But that uh, means like the whole family means yeah. uh, maybe it's just the dad and the kids, maybe just the mom and the kids. We have a lot of dad, mom, and the kids. Mm, beautiful, <laughs> you know. And then like because uh, also it's like one thing like people always saying like what you should do, but we not without doing it themselves, right? Mm. You walk in my school, like we're not selling. Our family environment. We are our family environment. You're gonna walk in there. I teach. My wife teaches. She's a judo and she's a black belt. She's just a black belt under me, mm. right? Yeah. And then we're gonna have our seven-year-old John Lucas. He trains. Yeah. So we're gonna have our four, soon to be five-year-old Maria Clara. She trains. <laughs> you know, and then like. I do understand the coaches that don't compete uh, on the sense of like, oh, I wanna focus on my students. But I think that's easier said than done. Like, you know what I mean by that? Like, I believe that like, I'm still competing. Like I compete only master's division, right? But I don't think that because I'm competing, I give less attention to my students. Mm. I think I'm showing them that there's no excuses. You know, if I believe that competition is a huge tool to personal development because you have to deal with so many emotions. Yeah. In a, in a gap of like five minutes, 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, like, Man, like what, what, because I don't think people that does jiu-jitsu are normal people, right? <laughs> so a normal people, a normal person, what they take like 40 years to learn, maybe gonna learn in a 10 minute round. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And then so, and then like they're walking in there and they're walking in there, so, I, I competed, my wife compete, uh, my your, kids yeah, compete. Yeah, your son competes, I've seen some videos. You know? <laughs> so like, it is, it is a family thing. And then like, we could use, like have other courses as well that they compete and then like they stop and then they, they don't compete anymore. And then like, oh, like, I have done, yes. And then I respect that as well, like you, you have done done past sentence <laughs> so you're not doing it more right how am i gonna tell my kid what they're supposed to eat and i eat unhealthy food mm. yeah how am i gonna tell my kid that when he's like afraid of compete he should, should compete to face his fears when i don't compete myself yeah Oh, how can I tell a student that has like a, a bruised knee or elbow that like 
he shouldn't push himself or herself if I'm not doing it. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I, I could say, I could say that I, I have done, but it would be past sentence. Like, what, yeah. what am I doing now? Yeah. So I'm not only teaching, I'm doing with them. Yeah. You know, like, we do, we are like, I'm not in uh, front of them, I'm not behind them, I'm beside them. And then going through the same that they're going through. Um, because people, oh, it's just a hobby right for like 90 something percent of people yeah guess what it is a hobby for me as well my job is not to compete no like my job is to teach to mm. help people yeah so if but if i say that competition can help on your on your growth then then i'm competing as well mm. so that's why yeah. sometimes people are like oh but you you announce your retirement. They're like, yes, did I announce my retirement? But I say, if you go back to the only on flow grappling, I'm saying that I'm not going to compete professionally in to tournaments anymore, like all this, right? And then some people are like, oh, no, I was like, no, no, don't worry. You guys are still going to see my master's division. <laughs> right? Like, you guys, you guys are still going to see me, like, oh, if you have a master's super fight, yeah, I'll do it. You know, because mm -hmm. I don't think that means that I'm professional compared to anymore. No. I'm not taking no. like a professional approach to competition. I'm Understand. I'm professional like coach. Yeah. Right? Like that that's my mm -hmm. profession. Like I I I own like a, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school, right? A Jiu Jitsu school. So that's my profession. And that happens that I love to compete. Mm. I think there's a huge tool to personal development. My kids are training now. What better example I can give to my kids than like stepping there myself? Mm. What better example <laughs> I can give to my son? Like, and then, oh no, I'm going to have, uh, I'm 40 years old. So I'm going to have a 40 year old student that he's thinking of competing or he's not like, he's afraid of competing and then like, he doesn't feel that he can do good or whatever. And no, because I have a family and then I have a job and then like, but when he looked to the side, I'm 40 year old. My wife, my kids, they are like, I have family as well. Yeah. I'm working every day from morning classes to night classes. Uh. Right. <laughs> doing, always doing courses, like, I have certifications in other things. I think there's another thing that like, I don't lock myself just in jiu-jitsu, like that's mm. beyond jiu-jitsu. So I'm gonna have a strength and conditioning certification, like nutrition certification, life coach certification, and I like mm. because I I like to spend my my knowledge. Mm. You know, Wonderful. yeah, yes, and like I'm like fascinated to study other coaches from other sports mm, interesting yeah because like coaching coaching a big part of coaching is know how to manage people yeah exactly yeah, what yeah. leader has to do right mm, yeah yeah and so and i understand that i'm a leadership position so how how some coaches they are so successful mm. yeah like constantly like it's not like oh oh that guy he won a world cup with that or that guy won a champions league like like at once like but why have some that win like three times four times five times mm. yeah and they win like national leagues and then they win like like and likewise, if you if you transfer for for jiu-jitsu, like why why Bushish won 13 world titles? Mm. Like don't tell me that it's like it is like oh because he trained a lot. No, he has something special. You know, like well, you we just like you just gave him an example. Could it be could it be Shanji, could it be Roger, could it be Bruno Malfacini. 
you know, could be like Rafa Mendes, could be like, like, could be Vitor Shaolin, could be like Robson Moura. Like, the names that I'm saying, they, they are not normal people. They, they are not normal. <laughs> Same. Like, so yeah. Yeah, but I'm talking about comparators, right? And then we're yeah. like, and like if you go like when I, I said that I like to to see coach for the sports, like so why why Jose Mourinho and Pep Guardiola they are like so successful for like over a decade? Yeah, it's not like one time, two time, three time things like over a decade, right? Like why why Phil Jackson? Like so successful, like NBA. Mm. You know, like what, what, what? How, how they, how they deal with the superstars and the player that play maybe just thirty seconds off the bench. Mm. Yeah. Because they're, they're on the same team. Like in a jiu-jitsu school, they're gonna have like always gonna every jiu-jitsu school gonna have their, their stars, right? Like their their guy or girl, they're like, oh man, that guy or that girl, they go to competition and they win. And like, yeah. I, ha I have like a couple of competitors here, like men and women, they do, right? But I also have that one that never competed, mm, probably will never compete. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> doing Jiu Jitsu because they need Jiu Jitsu. They like just to keep saying. Mm. Yeah. So, like, how do I deal with those two extremes? Yeah. yeah so, that's... in every, every team, you're going you're gonna to have that. Um, yeah. So, like, I'm fascinated with studying that, like, like human, like, um, behaviors, you know? Mm, like yeah, how... yeah. I love, I love that as well. Like, why do people act like they do? How do they, like, why and how and investigating it and trying to understand it yeah like i do i do a lot of stuff i do a lot of stuff with my my competitors um like most with them because um <coughs> i believe everyone has a why yeah all right so like i get with them like they I, I always want to know their why. Because their why gonna make me deal with each individual in a different way because everyone is different. Yeah, so true. Yeah, it is. You know, so like, uh, so, and then a lot of times I share my why with them because that put me in a position that I'm more like with them, not above them. Mm. Right. Yeah. No, like we're sharing. Yeah. We're Precisely. sharing. So that's why yeah. I said it's like no like, oh I have done no like no, I'm doing with you. Like that that's my why. Yeah. You know, and then like when you create that bond, man, I like, like it's just way beyond jiu jitsu. Yeah. And like it's yeah. like that's it. Like I love jiu jitsu, but it's yeah. way beyond jiu jitsu. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. It's so like that's like well, learned, like in my job now, like it's with sales. So there's so many things, and actually, I bring up jujitsu, like because it's such it's a huge part of me. Like I bring it into my work now, and I'm sharing mm -hmm. it with like the, um, say metaphors. Like well, I'm sharing, I'm using jujitsu and like transferring it to sales and like. And whenever my my boss says something like, and I'm sharing, okay, like how you gather your client, like how you get your customers, and like how to like is as like okay if you're taking the back of someone, like you're you're going for the back, you have to like, and if you want to make the choke tight, you have to let him like give him some space to set it up, and then like you grab and you relax, and then you just oh, choice. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like, and that's like, because I've been working with that so much, like, and I've been training, like, and like suddenly I'm in a place where it's like, what I love about jujitsu and like, say sales, like it's, there's so many similarities because like in jujitsu, once you grow, you want to become better, you have to like adjust 
and then I always use the well, not all. Um, I've been using the example of okay, when if I'm in my guard, like the other guys in my mount, okay, I'm trying to get a triangle choke, but I can't do it, so I have to go back to the safe haven to my basics to like, and then I like, mm -hmm. try again. And there's so many things like you you grow in the math and like same you grow in business. You have to just like so I, I well, it's. And to see now, like how much it's been giving me, it's yeah, it's hard to explain because it's as you say beyond, it's beyond. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I've just started. It's just been, a, it's not not just been a year, but it's been a year where I've learned so much, and I've I've cried a lot. I've been sweating a lot, and like hurt my ankle last year. I was supposed to go to well, I was going to the United States, and then I well, I was going to train with some of my uh, one of my friends who's been to, um. He's been the supervisor of uh, the combatives in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So I was going to train. I was like, yay. And then I hurt my ankle the week before I left. And I couldn't do... I went training, but still, like, everything mm -hmm. yeah, failed. But still, like... Um, like, so, like, like, I've learned so much. Like, it's... Yeah. There's so much more to learn from me, even though, even though I've just been going for a year. And like to see like what it's been giving me beyond just training. Mm -hmm. That's like, and to listen to you, like getting so inspiring to hear like the way you think about like, and I well just, I know and believe that many people will learn from listening to those who are, well, how many years have you been doing jujitsu like training? Or like uh, 30, over 30 years. Yeah. So that's like, then you can like I say when it starts. Huh? I was 10 years old when I started. Oy. I'm 40 now. I started May of 1990. Now we're fixing to go to December of 2020. So a little over a little over 30 years. Oy. So that's like that that's why I like people uh I was I've been listening to a book called Mastery by Robert Green. He talks mm. about like it takes at least 10 years for some for say Beethoven or uh, Da Vinci and all these greats, like, okay, what made them like? That's you have to go through a lot in order to get. And for you, you've been going through a lot, like, mm -hmm. what you've learned and the lessons you've learned, and then what you what you've been telling here and now, like, what it takes to. You have to go through it, like, in order to help others go through it, like, mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. amazing i didn't know this like ever on like but that's so great like if i haven't if i hadn't gone to bulgaria well if i hadn't gone training like but i decided i wanted to go i i hoped it was like for beginners but i was so like fresh and fresh meat and but still like to just be there as you said like uh, to have that experience it was so um vital and important because i took it with me mm -hmm. yeah yeah. But like, uh, I w w one of the things that I said is like the impact that, like, I know that I'm responsible to to have like in people's like choices or like the student that is a kid and then like 15 years from now he remembers something that I said right. So, like a little over a year ago, you went to my seminar there in Varna, like you did to, like the, the the classes. And if I haven't said anything that hasn't stuck with you, you wouldn't be having that conversation now. So you had you had few classes with me. You had you had, like back then. Yeah, you one, cla one class. class yeah, <laughs> no so idea. No idea what this was. You know, like they don't know who I didn't. They don't like really know Jiu Jitsu. Just like okay, you start Jiu Jitsu, gonna do that thing. Like should be nice or whatever. And now over a year later like because we 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 we've been trying to do the the talk yeah for like over a month like over two months maybe more yeah maybe even more <laughs> because because of like schedules and like I'm like I'm crazy busy here yeah. and then you busy there as well you know but like if if I had if I had had any impact of, of your on your journey because after that, and then like you start following me, like or 
Facebook, Instagram, all those things. So it's not always not only the class, but everything that you see. Mm. So like you wouldn't have that conversation. No, no, like you know, like so <laughs> that that that's what I mean. So I know I know that, and then may and then like I'm one hundred percent sure that like. I don't know, I don't know what I said or what I wrote, but whatever what I said and what I wrote that like made me have that conversation now because the one thing that I, I have assistant coaches, mm. right? And I, I and then like uh, Emily, Xavier, Vanessa, all teenagers, like Emily and Xavier just they just turned 18, Vanessa. She's 15, she's gonna be 16 soon. So they're assistant coach on the kids' class, right? Mm. And then we have like Yuri that like I brought him from Brazil, like he's one of the coaches, he's a black belt, he's 25. So he's still young adult, right? And I tell them like the importance that they need to understand that I have everything they say all right. Mm. Like ev everything, like how they have to be. Like careful, and then like I know that they're gonna mess up. They have messed up sometimes, <laughs> like yeah, nothing yeah, big. But yeah. that that's part of of their like growth, right? Yeah, that's course, part of the, matur the maturing process. Yeah, right. And then they give frustration sometimes, and then like I I'm like I hug them, like that's 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 part of the that's part of the deal, like yeah. <laughs> you know, because like it's crazy to think. Like that girl Vanessa, like she's 15. So we, we went to a kids tournament another day. So technically she's still a kid, right? She's 15. And so like we compare with the little ones, like for the little ones, she's like, oh my God, because for the yeah. little ones, they're like five, <laughs> like my daughter, my daughter's four, like, and Vanessa like helps to coach her, right? So like, for they're gonna look for her like as an adult. Yeah. For a five year old, she's adult. Yeah, like, oh, you're so big. You're like, whoa. But for me, she's just like, yeah. So for me, it was like really nice to see like her going like mad to mad running, coaching the kids and putting her key on, compete gi, take gi off, now, now, no gi. And then, like, because, like, how important it is for the four year old girls, the five year old girls, like, like, I'm the boys, of course, as well, but like I'm talking to the girls, like to see that the coach is there, like with them. Yeah. It's yeah. not just telling them what to do. Yeah. And that's that's something else than like what I've seen in the martial arts world. Like you have those who like they look at themselves like gods and and they're like, I'm above you. Like what you say. I'm, I remember like when I was training in traditional jiu jitsu, when I was. 13 14 and there was mm -hmm. one one guy one like black belt he had won some maybe world tournament i don't remember but still he was mm -hmm. like in this like and i still remember to that day because like he said he was like oh like i'm much better than you and like so like and what i've seen other places and not to like judge anyone but like there's a difference in being with the, like on their side than being mm. over them or even under them because you have that like that side of it as well so like mm -hmm. yeah you know, like i have I, I think everything's a phase right if you if you ask the 40 year old bruno how was the teenager bruno man? i thought i thought that was the best man in the world i thought i was like the mike tyson of you know like <gasps> that was my teenager mindset yeah but like so the teenager and the young adult Bruno have nothing to do <laughs> with the 40 year old Bruno. You know, and uh, it's it's phase of life, phase of like of like like different time back then, like we're talking still in the 90s, you know, like like they didn't have all the information they have nowadays. Like nowadays, like man, my my daughter, four year old, she can like she can like go through iPhone way better than I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's good, go everything by herself there you know like so it, it's like um Vito Shaolin he said something on, on an interview 
that is stuck with me. And I think that's so true. Like nowadays, there is so much information that is no information. Yeah. Mm. You know, like too much. So how how much can you get? You know, so um yeah. but anyways, like well, back then they didn't have all those. So like what what's it was like or oh, like Mike Tyson's my elder, or I'd be like Mike Tyson. And I was winning everything and then I was finishing everybody and I was like, Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. like and then walking on high school like and then you know like then they was like, Oh, he's a champion, but like you know, like you you go through those phases. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so uh when you say that because you talk about about like how that guy was acting and like and then maybe that was the phase of that maturity or we can say lack of maturity. Yeah. Right. Um and uh, I'm sure that now he's another person because if he's not, then he haven't learned anything from us. Yeah, yeah. So I don't like I have no idea, like but like there's some yeah some of them like my first teacher in jiu-jitsu uh, he was like this i know everything everything like and he's still the same like but anyways <laughs> like mm-hmm. what i look like what i look at now like i look at myself okay i have a responsibility for my daughter she's turning four next well in march she's growing mm-hmm. like and i like everything i do and say like it's it affects her it's it's um like she will inherit it as like everything i say and do like that's a part of her like how she will grow as a person mm-hmm. uh, so yeah so like and i'm when she's old enough i will bring it to jiu-jitsu like well i can start now but it's, it's a bit difficult now as well like well nothing is difficult but covid and um i say like i bring it to what is a local martial arts center i bring her there and like they have this ninja obstacle run and she loves it like we went to once she was running and then she come on daddy and i had to Mm -hmm. run after her and like and then i run next to her and like and like for her like it means so um, because that's creating something that she says like well my father he was running with me and like um yeah, they're born like, they're like she's a daddy's girl yeah she is she's my <laughs> little warrior princess and like yeah so and i know for sure what i will bring like give bring to her and like teach her like she likes that uh she haven't got there yet like where we have been rolling but i i have to order a pink gi for her she loves the pink i have to find mm-hmm. somebody and order a gi for her mm-hmm. so like yeah Nice. Yeah, man. Nice. Yeah, Bruno. It's like it was so amazing to talk with you. Like several of the times where you were, where you were talking by, like my hair on my back, and it was like because it's <laughs> to hear about like what you had to say, like and like what you've been teaching, what I've learned now from you. Like it's mm-hmm. it's been worth everything. Like yeah, really appreciate, um, I appreciate it. Yeah. Like I appreciate the opportunity. You know, like, um, hopefully things, like, because now, like, we have no control over anything with the pandemic, right? Like, we just talk about yeah. control and not yeah. control over things. Uh, but, like, my guys in Finland and in Bulgaria, they they want to, like, bring them there as soon as possible, which means as soon as we can make this happen, hmm. right? Um, so we have to see, like, countries' restrictions, because each country is different as well, how they deal with like quarantine, no quarantine, and like, yeah. so, um, but like, I hope, so when I go, like, Bulgaria or Finland, like, hope to see you, like, maybe I can get something done in Norway as well, like, I know the Carlos, you know, I know, I know other guys. You know, you know Bruno Caval, you know him? Who? Who did you know in Norway? Uh, Zé Carlos. Huh? So. Jose Carlos. Yeah, Jose Carlos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I know, I know, I know him. Like I have met, like the guys like Tommy and Aspen. Oh yeah, yeah, you met them. Too. Yeah, yeah. I have met also. them. Um. So, anyway, so like, hope hopefully we I, I can see you sometime soon in Europe. 
All right. Yeah, if, nice. if, if not in Norway, in one of those countries, like Bulgaria have been already. Right? I don't know if I have been in Finland. But Finland Never and Norway, they are, they are pretty close, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we have Sweden yeah. in between us. We have Sweden in between us. So it's pretty close. Yes. Yeah, when you go further up to the north, you suddenly... Uh, yeah. Let me think. Yeah, you can enter Finland and then you have Russia. Like, so we're all connected. <laughs> yeah, so like, anyways, hope, hope, hope to see you. Um sometime soon i know that like if things like now is, everything is if right yeah if so if things go well if things go well i i believe by by march i'm gonna i'm gonna by march april delays are gonna i'm gonna be going to europe because like mm. that that's part of the growth the associations where i have to go there like work with the guys and everything mm. right so i'm gonna keep you posted like we have we have each other's like contacts and then i hope to see you soon